So, does the NHS now think that mothers and fathers are now incapable of raising children without a steady stream of apps and poster campaigns to guide them? That seems to be the assumption behind the new If They Could Tell You campaign, designed with the laudable intention of supporting parents to help build secure bonds to help nurture their baby's future mental health. But which can give the worrying impression that not following the advice to the letter could lead to your child having mental illnesses. Well, joining me to discuss this, I have the author, journalist and mother of a toddler herself, Ella Whelan. <laughs> Ella, it sounds very benevolent, this campaign. So do you want to tell us what's wrong with it? Well, yeah, good intentions uh, are one thing, but I think this actually, it's not benevolent. Um, these sort of, it's, if anyone remembers the Start for Life campaign, the government campaign with those really horrendously irritating plasticine people telling you to, that you're too fat and that you, you <laughs> change your life, um, it's a campaign under that umbrella. And right. it's, it's uh, the government announcement is all about the idea that unless you are giving direct attention to your baby, um, 24 7 um, then they will, they will develop mental health issues later in life um, it's the most astonishing amount of sort of psycho babble well, what's the quackery. evidence for that I mean what are they basing that on I mean <laughs> I, 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 there isn't any credible evidence for it number one um, but I suppose there's a correlation being drawn between uh, an increase in reporting of mental health issues in adults that we see now, mm. which, you know, is a thing that's happening. And you would, if you were sensible, you would question the accuracy and legitimacy of a lot of those claims. But there's a real kind of mummy didn't love me attitude going on where the ills that people are facing today are being blamed on parenting styles. So, for example, there's this one poster that says, um, sometimes I just really need a hug of a lovely little boy. And it's telling you, you horrible, awful mother, um, to hug your child because, you know, because you wouldn't know to if the NHS didn't tell you. Right. And, um, the, <laughs> and there's two really bad things going on there. Number one, you know, if you are actually being a good mother, you can't hug your kid all the time because you've got to, you know, wash the, their soiled clothes and cook their dinner and, yes. you know, do all the things that mean raising a child. But also <laughs> the bottom line of it says, um, you know, physical contact or something builds brain connections. So you shouldn't hug your kid because you love them and they're lovely. Yes. But you should hug them because it builds brain synapses. So it's this really <laughs> horrible, sterile way of looking at child development or looking at raising children. And, um, and actually, <laughs> it's so insane that the Minister for Health, Andrea Leadsom, did this sort of press release to, to, press release to announce it. And she said, in the 1,001 days from pregnancy, pregnancy, like conception, like the minute you have sex to their second birthday, these are the days in which the future of their mental health will be decided. And that's just utter lunacy. I yes, mean, I mean, that sounds mad. It's completely mad, but it's also a re it's really damaging for parents. It's such a huge amount of pressure to put on, and it's always women, particularly women. Um, you already are crippled by guilt when you, like I'm doing at the moment, drop them off at nursery and they cry at the nursery mm. gates or, you know, you you feel like you haven't put your all into <laughs> Peekaboo, which is one of the posters, because you're knackered because they've had you half, you know, up half the night. And then to have this sort of messaging breathing down your neck telling you that there will be consequences unless you do this right. I think it's a terrible amount of pressure being put on parents Can for, I ask for you, no reason. Why is it that, that successive governments seem to think that these campaigns have any effect whatsoever. I mean, we saw in Scotland the hate monster campaign mm. where a puppet lectures you to be nicer to strangers. Mm. But the point is that no one reacts well to this. No one sees that and says, oh, I will, I will change my behaviour. Thank you, government. <laughs> yeah. When has that ever happened? Well, well, actually, it, it is changing people's behaviour, but not for the better. So I, you know, spend a lot of time in play groups and things like that. And it, they're full of really nervous women who are, because um, again, <laughs> mostly mums, who treat their kids like, um, you know, and I mean this in sort of a nice way, like Tamagotchis. It's like you're terrified about if you're doing the right thing, have, have they had the broccoli today? Have they done the tummy time? Have they done... It's like yeah. tick, 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 tick. And they're not actually raising their kid in a way that, that that's enjoyable for them. So I think it is having a direct effect. But, of course, this current government didn't invent this. This is sort of hangover from New Labour's Sure Start scheme, which was... Right all about a kind of a social engineering project, you know, with a bonus of some childcare, which has been stripped away now, there's hardly any of that left. But a sort of a social engineering project that said, we're going to fix social inequality by making sure that poor parents 
the kids of poor parents get away from home life and mix with some richer kids and hopefully pick up some good habits. And it was a really it's been a really corrosive intervention into family life. Through that has come, blossomed all these NHS campaigns. And the sort of horrible irony of all of it is that the NHS, to my mind, has no right lecturing parents on how to raise their kids, because at the moment, with the maternity scandal, the NHS is failing to bring babies into the world alive um, on a quite astonishing scale at the moment. So, you know, to have, to have that happening and then be sort of finger wagged by campaigns at, you know, mm. <sighs> what I'm, the fact that it's the word, you know, international war crime that I give my toddler a bit of squash is, <laughs> you know, well, I think that's what really, that's what really kicks us. Well, I was going to ask, because on the basis of what you, you said, um, I imagine these campaigns aren't cheap. Mm. Isn't there something that the government could be doing financially or m spending the money in a better way for new parents? <laughs> yeah, a couple of crashes, you know, a couple of some better childcare um, would be just would alleviate so many family pressures. But also, I think it's, you know, it's not really a policy issue. It, it links to the sort of hate crime monster stuff. It links to the things that are going on in schools with gender ideology. There is this sort of notion that parents left alone to raise their children as they see fit are dangerous and children mm. will come out harmed from that. Um, and parents making decisions, whether it be about religion or ethics or morals or what goes in their plate or how long, you know, how you organise family life. Yes. Um, can't happen freely. It has to happen under sort of with with a state surveillance. So you mean schools not telling their kids that it's their parents that they've changed gender or that yeah. kind of thing, or the or the Scotland's named person scheme where the yeah. Scottish government tried to assign a guardian, a state guardian to every child. Yeah, and I, I mean you know it's slightly more controversial, but there was the whole row about the smacking ban, which mm. again, which whatever you think about smacking, most people understand that doesn't really work. Never mind um, it being sort of maybe a bit outdated. But the idea that you would criminalise, you know, you put such a surveillance and criminalised parents on how they raise their kids fez, feeds into this idea mm. that, you know, adults can't be trusted to do the most natural and commonsensical thing, which is raise kids. I mean, even the word parenting I have an issue with because it's turned into this sort of horrendous concept um, that's full of rules and lists and, um, and, and judgment, not healthy judgment, but sort of corrosive judgment, when in actual fact it's just raising children. And I think we really need to... Parents need to start... <laughs> Not quite. I mean, I'm, I'm going to start pulling down the posters <laughs> in my nursery because the, the spaces are so sought after. I want to stay in there. But we have to start saying, for God's sake, this is just not helping. And in actual fact, I think it's, you know, the people keep going on about the birth rate being so low and no one wanting to have any kids. I understand why, because you're not just having a kid and having a nice family and having a nice time. You're, you're embarking on this project of which everyone from the midwife to Andrea Leadsom to um, the NHS local sort of do-gooder is looking at you and watching you doing. And we actually should, I don't want to be kumbaya about this, but you know, I want to get back to sort of it takes a village to raise a child aspect because children will benefit from this. And I think probably the last thing I want to say is that you look around and um, particularly in sort of middle class haunts of cafes and things like that and you see all these products of these intensive parenting, gentle yeah. parenting, they're monsters. <laughs> they're absolute monsters. So we're doing, this is wrong. The NHS doesn't know how to raise your kids better yeah. than you do. You know very well. Ella Whelan, thanks so much for joining me.